but let's let's jump into talking about the tools, talking about the panels, and um, seeing what things we do know and what things we don't know because we've been in Photoshop and in Illustrator. So you can see we have a selection tool, a direct select tool with the white arrow. We have our pin tool, so we can make all of our fancy shapes. Um, all the same shapes that are in Illustrator are right there. We have our text tool. We have our type on a path tool, just like we do in Illustrator. Um, we have a pencil tool, which we haven't really talked about much. Um, we have the eraser tool, but um, we'll probably touch on that a little bit. We have our line tool, which we all know about. This is new in InDesign. This is called our frame tool. Um, you have a couple different types of frames, and we'll talk about what you use frames for. Um, then we have our shape tool. This is should be very familiar. This is in all the programs we've used so far. We have our rotate button. So as soon as you click this rotate button, you can rotate things around. Um, this is fairly new. Uh, Illustrator has this kind of buried. Photoshop has this in the transform um, menu, but we've used this. We just don't. Have, we've never had a button like this before. Um, let's see here: scissors, transform, gradient. We have. Um, scale tools and shear tools. Again, we had these in Photoshop. They are called transform, and um, we'll uh, we'll use these a little differently in InDesign. We now just have a nice icon for them. We have the transform tool, our gradient tool. Um, this is a transparency tool. Our eyedropper, our hand tool, our zoom tool. All those things work the same. So pretty much the only thing, as far as the tools go, that we haven't seen before is maybe the uh, the frame tool, the uh, scale tool, and then maybe um, the transparency tool. I mean, all these things live in other places and other programs, but we have the actual tools in the toolbar. Okay, so we also have a stroke and a fill color. Right now they're not um, anything. They're no stroke or no fill, but if we wanted to change that, we could have um, a blue stroke and a green fill. Okay. Um, we have text effects here, which is a little different. We've never had that before. And you can see we have our color here. We can apply colors or gradients or apply none. So that's kind of new. And in InDesign, the, the, an important thing is you can see we have a lot going on. And we'll talk about creating a new document in a minute uh, after we go over all the tools. But here we have a few different views. At the very bottom last icon we have a normal view, a preview, a bleed, and what's called a slug. So our normal view is where you get to see um, the whole, your everything that you've drawn, that you've done in, in design. So let's talk about the actual document here a little bit. We have a red line, and that's actually what's called a bleed. So our document actually ends at this black line. So we have this red line, and then we have this black line. That's actually the edge of our paper. And the distance between this black line and this red line is what we call a bleed. And the reason you bleed things is if if you're sending this to an actual printing press um, that is going to uh, put it together for you, they're going to handle that bleed so that they can uh, make the cuts. And if it's a quarter of an inch off or an eighteenth of an inch off, that that blue line isn't going to give you a you know, it's going to go all the way off the page. So if they're off a little bit, um, you'll still have a blue line, and it'll still look good. Most people won't notice that it's a, you know, 18th of an inch off or whatever it is. Um, but bleed lines are really important. So we also have this pink line that's called our safe area. So anything like text that we don't want to bleed off, we need to make sure it's in our safe area. So this is kind of like, um, can be equated to like a margin. Uh, you know, you don't put things in your margin because you don't want it to be cut off. Uh, so it's kind of like a margin, but it's really what's called a safe area. So if you're doing things on purpose, you don't want to ever get, really go to the edge of the page. You usually want to go into the bleed. So going back to our display, if we go and click instead of on normal, on preview, it cuts it down and shows us what is on the page. So you can see this blue line continues way out here and it turns it gray, turns off our safe area, so we can get a really good idea 
of what it looks like. So I'm going to click off this this text. Now I've by selecting this I've made it blue. So that's not what I want to do, but for illustrations that's fine for now. Um, but you can see it's made so you can see what it looks like. And this is a good tool just to toggle on and off just to see what it's looking like um, without your guides on. So if you put it on normal and you make guides or whatever else, it'll show up everything here. So that's um, a really nice feature. Now you can see what's going all the way to the bleed. You can see you can erase everything except for the bleed. So this is our actual document. You can see our blue line goes into the bleed and that just helps you see what's in the bleed. Um, I don't use this feature as much. Same with the, the slug. The slug is just going to, sh this document doesn't actually have a slug, um, but uh, it's going to show you what's in that area. And that's mostly for bounding and, and other options that really we're not going to talk about in, in our discussion. So really the two things are normal and preview. Okay. So I'm going to go back to normal and let's finish cruising around our uh, layout real quick and, and figuring out what's different about InDesign. So we still have this this um, control panel at the top. So depending on what tool you're on, so if I'm on my type tool, you can see that control panel changes. Just like if I'm on my move tool, that control panel changes again. If I'm on my frame tool, uh, my shape tool, other tools, that will change as soon as I draw something. So um, just know that that changes based on the tools you have. We have the application bar at the top just like we do in all the other programs. Um, a couple things are a little different like rulers and and screen modes and stuff like that. This is the same thing that you have down over here. Um, they just put it up here to make it a little bit more convenient um, to do your previews since uh, you know in the other programs that's where the, the view area is. Uh, the other thing that we need to look at is our panels over here and um, Again, there's two ways you can look at it. I like kind of hiding these where I can see the icons instead of having, in Photoshop, I like having where I can see everything like this. Um, I like the icons in Illustrator and InDesign just because then they're clean and then when I need to get in to do something, I can do that one specific thing. So in InDesign, we're working with pages and there's a page button. And I'm going to kind of drag this out so you can see what's going on. So right now, this document only has one page. And we'll talk about master pages in, a, in probably uh, a week or two, maybe in the advanced class. But you, you can add pages, multiple pages, facing pages, uh, and we'll go into all that a lot in, in the, the next couple of videos. But really, pages are where you live in um, in design because this is really your document. If you have 200 pages, you're going to have all 200 pages here. and it, um, this window becomes really, really, really important. Okay, so under there you have links. So you can see this is what I was talking about. This is an actual link to a file, 0011hov.jpg. Um, you can see the, the color space, we'll talk about this, should be CMYK. Anything prints should be CMYK. And InDes InDesign will let us know that when we export. But these are all the links that are in this document. So if something happens to these links, let me go back to my folder. So let's say I moved this out of that folder. Okay. And as soon as I move that out of that folder, if I refresh this, InDesign says, hey, this link isn't found in that folder. So it, it, it won't be able to print this, which is very important. And your organization makes needs, needs, needs to be very diligent about where you put things and how you're linking stuff to them. That's why, you've, if you notice, I have a newsletter. Where my newsletter is saved, I have a folder called images. So all the images I'm using in that newsletter are in that folder. Um, so that's really, really important. And I, you know, may, hopefully I'm not beating a dead horse, but um, I'm stressing that enough. So you can always refresh, and you can go searching for it. So there's a bunch of tools in InDesign to help you find these things, um, because they know it can be a problem, but um, setting up your folders and, and working properly really make a big difference. Okay, so I'm just going to cruise through a couple of other of these sections um, pretty quickly. Swatches we've talked about in InDesign, 
uh, or sorry, in Illustrator text wrapping, we'll talk about more in detail. Um, but it's how things wrap around uh, different boxes. Strokes we've talked about, colors we've talked about, layers. Um, these layers are like in Illustrator or InDesign. Um, sorry, Illustrator or Photoshop. Confusing myself here. Um, they're used a little differently in InDesign. I, I use them um, mainly for uh, photo layers or text layers f throughout the whole document. So I'm not putting a bunch of things on layers. Like this one page, I wouldn't have all these things on individual layers. I would have all the photos on an individual layer or all the page numbers on an individual layer. Um, all the footers, if the footers were the same, on an individual layer so I can adjust those layers and I can lock them accordingly. Um, right now, everything's on one big layer. And for our purposes here, that's just fine. So um, just know layers do exist in InDesign. And then you have your paragraph tools. Uh, if we go up to window, you have all your text tools, your type tools um, that you're used to having with uh, characters. Uh, I just don't have them docked here, and, and you may or may not as well. So um, you have your character tools, but notice in your character pan or in your control panel at the top, you have the same tools here and here. So just how you want to get to them, how you want to arrange your uh, workspace. So that's pretty much a good tour of InDesign, um, kind of a good introduction into how InDesign deals differently with files, uh, especially with linking things, super, super important, and kind of an introduction into pages. We're going to get into um, creating documents and um, working with actual text and images and uh, really delve into InDesign in the next video.